بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فاتبعون عسنا اللهم عاملنا بفضلك ولا تعاملنا بعدلك We pray to Allah سبحانه وتعالى to deal with us with his favor not with his justice in another word we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to give us what he has, not to give us what we deserve. Because we deserve, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pay what we deserve, maybe by now, we don't deserve even to be on this earth. But always Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him to deal us with his favor and his greatness. Otherwise, we have nothing good to offer and we have nothing good really to save ourselves. And we read Surah Al-Asr again, and it is a surah that truly, from time to time when we think about the title of it, Surah Al-Asr, and when you ask the children what Al-Asr means, straight away they will think it is a salat. Oh, it is one of the salat, and it, it is. Asr is one of the salat named Al-Asr, so important, and also Asr means uh, uh, era, or era, we can say it. Or Asr also means from the day we born until the day we die. Asr means the lifetime that we have from the birth uh, to, the, to the death, which means our time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminding us with the container of our life in which we do good or bad and with which we do good or bad. In order to do something good, you need time for that. In order to do something bad, you need time for that. And that was the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, Al kayyisu man dana nafsahu wa amila lima ba'd al maut. Wal ajizu man atba'a nafsahu hawaha wa tamanna ala Allahi al amali. A real wise human being is the person who takes themselves into account and work hard for life after death. Work hard to be successful in the hereafter. But the real loser and disabled person is the one who follows their desire but have beautiful dreams saying that Allah will forgive, Allah will do that. Having beautiful dreams and we know that dreams are not reality. The only reality is the thing that we do and this has to be done during this lifetime. So our life, we call it also Al-Asr and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind us with that. Look at your time, look at your life and he swore by that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he can swear with anything. He swore by you know, with, by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, by duha, wa duha, wa layl, wa sama, wa fajr. But as we, as believers, we are not allowed to swear in any name other than the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said it, Man kana halifan fal yahlif billah aw li yasmud. If you are to say an oath or a swear, you have to swear in the name of Allah, otherwise don't. So we are not allowed to use other names. Some people say, I swear in the name of the Quran. I swear in the name of Muhammad. Some even say, I swear in the name of my parents. This is haram. So on this way, say Wallah in the name of Allah or don't. And we say this only when we have to. We don't use it a routine every now and then. We say, Wallah, Billah, Tallah, what no. Only when it is serious to prove something really important, then we bring the name of Allah SWT inside. So, wala asr inna li insana lafi khusr. Full stop. If we can really see, Allah SWT is the one who created the human being. And then he said this about the human being. All humans are in loss. And we know what loss means. And when we uh, re rewind our life, and we can see how much we lost from our life, some, some part of our life we lost it in sleeping and some part of our life we, we lost it in just sitting there and doing nothing and one bad type of loss is when we spend that time in doing something bad so every human being is in loss and the only way to get rid of that illa alladheena amanu wa amilu salihat only the people who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them to believe in. There are certain things, there is no way for us to learn about them. And no one can teach us these things, we only can believe in the ghaib, in the unseen, or the hidden system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we are to believe in that. In another way, 
if we don't have faith in our lives, there is nothing we can do. And whatever we do, we are not confident. In another <coughs> way, to have faith is a driving force that will make you do things and you are happy and you are confident in what you do because we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is a faith that made Bilal knock down the arrogance of the entire city of Macau, Arabia. They wanted him to say a word and he will be fine. He will live in peace. But they didn't know that his peace was in the suffering. They thought if they punish his body, his soul will give up. They thought the heat of the sun of Mecca will make him change his mind. But they forgot the heat of the faith of Bilal was hotter than the heat of the sun of Mecca. So in the end they failed. So someone who is faith, you cannot rule them in their life because they are already ruled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in order for us to be successful in what we want to do and what to achieve in our life, you have, we have to have faith. You have to believe that I'm a Muslim. I believe in what I'm doing because I trust the one who told me, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. If you are a teacher, you believe I'm a teacher and I have to do my job as a teacher. If you are a student, I believe I'm a student and I have to be a loyal student and do whatever the student has to do in order to get the knowledge. So with faith, number one, وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ So having the faith, not enough, it needs something else. You have to act, you have to work hard. If we have the faith but we don't do, that faith also is a false one. So we have to do not any deed but the good one. وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ So beside our faith, we go and do something good. And what is a good deed? The good deed is the one we did for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because this Ahmad Salih. We do it from our heart only for Allah's sake and we make sure we are doing it, doing it the way he told us to do it through the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's the one way to prove that we really love Allah. And the Holy Quran said it when many people need to say to the Prophet, yeah, we love Allah, we love Allah. And what is the, the answer from Allah to them? Say, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Tell them, O oh Muhammad, if you really love Allah, you must follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the only way to prove that you love Allah. Follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you do so, يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Allah will love you. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ And he will forgive you your sins. What is the way to prove that we love Allah? We follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالصَّوَرِ This is our social responsibility. Whoever we meet in our life, we have this responsibility. We are to advise one another to do what is right. And when we are advising one another, we have to be very wise. In another word, for example, if I am teaching children, we know the method how to teach children. They need to be taught and they need to be given what we got. They don't know how to take it. But with adults, for example, we have to learn together. Because sometimes maybe you may be a scholar, you have the knowledge, but you don't know the wisdom. You don't know how to talk to people. You don't know the timing and the way and the people's feeling. That's why Allah said to the Prophet ﷺ, إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة Invite mankind to the way of your Lord with wisdom. And what is wisdom? I need to know who I am talking to, what is their background, what is their emotional feeling, their economical problems, and things like that. Then we can get the right channel into their heart and help them to learn. But once we don't know that, we may think you are doing good, and in the other hand, we are actually getting people away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said to Mu'ad one day, you know, when you're leading the people in the salah, you know, make it short, because otherwise you make fitna. You may say, why the people don't come to the masjid? Because you are reading too long. You are the one who kicking them out from the masjid. All of this is, is, is the hikmah. Doing it is not enough, but we have to do it, respecting the other people who are on, on their way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also with you. And that is as a hikmah. What our saw bil hat advise one another to do what is right, what our saw be sober. 
and remind one another to be patient. If we are not patient in our life, there is nothing we can do. And sometimes we need somebody to tell us to be patient because human with their emotion, sometimes their anger takes them away from their uh, sense and from their consciousness. And that is a the moment they need help and they need someone to remind them that this is how life is. You will go through problems, you will go through loss of wealth and family members and things like that. It's a painful qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you need to be patient. Nothing you can do about it. So this is one way to help people to go on with their life, otherwise it is a musibah. So to get out of this loss, what we have to do, we have to give our heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should not worship Allah with condition. The Holy Quran warned us by saying, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى حرف. Some people, they worship Allah on the edge. When things are fine, they will be happy and they pray. But when things get hard and problems, they turn away from Islam and they start blaming Allah. Why you did this to me? What did I do to deserve this, this type of uh, misbehaving towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So we should not worship Allah with condition. And that's the one of the way when somebody will be completely lost. dunya wal This type of people, their loss is dunya and akhirah. Because their, their Islam is only on condition. Just like somebody loves you because you are being good to them, or you are rich, and when you are poor, they don't love you anymore. So what type of brotherhood is this? What type of brotherhood? We are uh, happy when things are fine, but when a problem comes, we start to fight among ourselves. This is not the real brotherhood. So and the poet in Arabic said, مَا أَجْمَلَ الدِّينَ وَالدُّنْيَا إِجَجْتَمَعَا وَأَقْبَحَ الْفَقْرَ وَالْعَسِيَانَ فِي الرَّجُلِ How beautiful it is when we can balance between our dunya and akhirah. I'm looking for dunya, to use it to make me save in the hereafter. So we balance. Look for dunya and enjoy it, but in the halal way. This is good, somebody who will enjoy dunya and enjoy akhirah. The dunya business will never make them forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is good. But the other hand, وَأَقْبَحَ الْفَقْرَ وَلَعَسِيَانَ فِي الرَّجُلِ How ugly and bad it is when somebody is really, really, really poor at the same time committing a lot of sins. <coughs> Not enjoying dunya, at the other hand, they don't worship Allah to pass in the hereafter. So it's one way to lose also the real loss, dunya and akhirah. So this is a Surah Al Asr, which Imam Shafi said, As a believer, this is enough for you to know what Allah SWT really needs from you. Surah Al Asr only, when we think about the ingredients of it in order to be successful in our life. May Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala save us from the loss in dunya and akhirah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <laughs> keep for us the brothers who will remind us to be patient and who will remind us and show us the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allow us to make mistakes and learn in our mistakes. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa an. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.